Let's look at another aspect, um, Ukraine. Now, you know that uh, the pro-war left, the warmonger left, believes in humanitarian intervention, and they're dedicated to the mythology of things like the Orange Revolution in Kiev back in 2004. Well, as I was telling you in real time, the Orange Revolution was a lemon, and it was extremely dangerous. We were getting close to something much, much more dangerous than Iran because of that real estate being so critical, right? That's uh, the glacis of Russia, and that is an area that uh, is always going to be extremely sensitive. And yet this is one of the only places where nuclear powers can collide. Now, the current troubles in Ukraine um, apparently generated quite a lot by Poland and by Sweden. Now, I would just add that both Poland and Sweden have a very unfortunate history of being under the influence of British intelligence in particular. But that there is a, um, there's a kind of an ad hoc group that includes Poland and Sweden, which is somehow, you know, action into uh, Eastern Europe, the co- coalition of meddlers and troublemakers and, of course, imperialists, because they do this for money. The European Union is offering Ukraine what has been, I think, accurately described as a semi-colonial deal. Uh, they are not offering membership. That's a, that's a fraud. Don't get the impression from all this coverage that membership is at issue. There is no offer of membership. No more, no more for, uh, for them than for the, for the Turks. They're about as far away as the Turks from being allowed into Europe. So when they say, we want Europe, we want the rule of law, what a load of malarkey. Plus, you want to take a look at the rule of law in the European Union, you're going you're gonna to need a, uh, a microscope to find uh, such uh, evidence. Rather, the idea is Ukraine as a sweatshop, Ukraine as a dumping ground, Ukraine as an area of uh, exploiting uh, labor, right, getting more cheap labor to come into the European Union to drive down wages. But above all, to create problems for Putin. This is anti-Putin. They're saying, oh, Putin, you're, you're feeling your oats, huh? You avoided a world war in Syria, or at least a regional war, We'll show you, we'll get you, we'll punish you for what you've done. He did a public service to everybody in the world, but they're going to get him. So um, they want uh, to bring down the Yanukovych uh, government, right? And they they really don't care much about how it happens. Poland and Sweden are out front. Certainly in the Orange Revolution of 2004, the Brzezinski family... Uh, was directly out front. We'll have to check whether that is still uh, the case or not. But now, um, who are these protesters, right? The Maidan Square, or the Independent Square, as it's known, right? Maidan. Uh, I'm afraid many of the protesters are neo-Nazis. I'm afraid they are neo-fascists. In particular, this group called Svoboda uh, shows that, uh, well, uh, that's what they are. These are xenophobic neo-Nazis. These are the kind of people who uh, look back fondly to the presence of the SS and uh, everything else. In other words, their, their hatred for Russia is so great that they're willing to go all the way to this extreme of neo-Nazism and national Bolshevism. Most commentators don't tell you this. And I'm, I've even heard Russian commentators who seem to be soft peddling that fact, but there it is. Um, the Svoboda Party, I think, would, would fill the bill uh, in that case. So essentially what you have is fascist gangs trying to organize a coup d'etat. I mean, this is, you could look at it, Mussolini's march on Rome went off without a hitch. In other words, there was a march, they marched in, the government fell, the king called on Mussolini to form a government, and that was uh, pretty quickly done. In this case, it's a march on Kiev, but it's very weak. It's a few thousand people. A lot of them are foreigners. A lot of them are hooligans who travel around Europe, right? Maybe a couple of weeks ago they were, you know, shooting off rocket pistols at a soccer game uh, or something like this, or shouting racist slogans at a soccer game. 
But now they're out in the they're in they've t- transformed themselves into pro democracy heroes, and they're now in the main square uh, of Kiev. But they've bogged down. Um, and of course, you know it's it's easy to compare this to what was done to occupy what the U.S. routinely does to uh, protesters. <laughs> You know, McPherson and all these other places were simply uh, gotten rid of. Uh, so the, the the hypocrisy, of course, is very high. But this is not the main point. Um, this is maybe five to 10,000 at the very most, with a lot of foreign hooligans coming in. Svoboda is a big component. And then we have this guy, Klitschko, this big prize fighter. Technically, I think he is still the heavyweight championship champion of the world, according to somebody's uh, apostolic succession. This guy is punch drunk. He is somebody who has been punched in the head too many times. We have heard about, uh, and correctly, about concussions in the National Football League. This poor guy reminds us of Rocky in the latter episodes of the Rocky story, right, when brain damage has begun to manifest itself. So Klitschko, who can hardly talk, this punch drunk puppet. They want him for president of the Ukraine? I'm sorry. This is absolutely crazy. So that's part of the grotesque stuff going on in the public square. And then we have Victoria's Secret, right? This is the time of year when everybody's eyes turn to the Victoria's Secret show when, uh, you know, people put themselves on parade. They put themselves on display. They exhibit themselves. And who do we have? Victoria Newland, of course, the Victoria in question. Victoria Newland, that is to say, Mrs. Robert Kagan, neocon and warmonger. She's now, she's been promoted, right? She was the spokes at the State Department during, uh, during Benghazi. And you'd think, that, uh, you'd think that Issa would have been able to put an end to her promotion, at least. But no, there she is. She's now assistant Secretary of State, uh, handing out tasty cakes, or were those hostess Twinkies, maybe some stale ones, to the cops and to the demonstrators with the U.S. ambassador. And this continues this really scandalous parade of um, Lithuanian, Polish, Swedish, and other European Union officials blatantly interfering in the internal affairs of Ukraine by giving raving speeches to these uh, crowds. So she should be fired. Let's put her on the list of this week, right? The targets for firing this week are Brennan, Susan Rice, Samantha Power, and Victoria Newland at the State Department. And throw in this U.S. Uh, ambassador to uh, Ukraine. Now, we'll have a couple of more things to say about uh, Ukraine in just a second. <laughs> to World Crisis Radio, with the Trump in Washington, D.C. Take, take some time off during these holidays to uh, look at the uh, Russian fleets lecture. If you haven't seen it, even if you have, take a look at it again. Try to get that up in the rankings. Try to get it uh, rebroadcast two or three times now during the uh, next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, remember, they do have the Civil War history, but the... Uh, 150 years ago, the armies had gone into winter quarters, so there was not that much uh, going on. So they will be increasingly dependent on reruns, and um, that is where this uh, this um, talk of mine might come in handy. Remember that uh, you know the it's it's one of the one of the most viewed of all the Civil War um, broadcasts. Now. Uh, Let's just say a few more words about Ukraine. Uh, right now, uh, the, it's expected that this weekend will bring bigger demonstrations, right, because uh, you know, people have off, and there's also you know, hooligans coming in, right? You get one kind of person goes to uh, Syria to pick up a gun, and the other kind uh, would go to someplace like uh, Ukraine to be a uh, a street fighter, right? You get your football helmet, you get your precision slingshot, get a few other things, and uh, and there you go. But now um, the official line from Kerry had been rather detached, in other words, it had been measured, and I think this was a sign of some wisdom. 
Uh, Kerry, though certainly evil, certainly skull and bones, this will not change, uh, is not quite at the same level of priority of firing as uh, as what we've just gone through, right? Uh, Newland, Brennan, Samantha Power, and the awful Susan Rice. But uh, he, he actually signaled a, a somewhat more moderate line. But now it looks like the State Department establishment, or at least a wing of it, the neocon types, the holdovers, and so forth, that they have uh, they've just gone ahead and... Uh, and make made their own policy, right? Got, they've gone into the streets. They voted with their feet. Um, I think what Kerry is reflecting is that, objectively speaking, in today's world, the tendencies to have a U.S.-Russian condominium over much of the world are strong. This is strong in the Middle East, strong in Europe, maybe less strong in Latin America and in Asia, but certainly this idea of a U.S.-Russian Russian American condominium. This is definitely uh, there, but uh, the people that are that are provoking, right, the various Victoria uh, Secret people, they're uh, trying, I think, to make their own policy. Now, let's just look at what the solution would be for uh, Ukraine. Certainly, the neo Nazis are not the solution. I hope everybody agrees. Klitschko, the punch drunk fighter, is not a solution. He needs to be. Uh, in therapy. Timoshenko, the kleptocrat, the gas princess, who is now also a hero of human rights and democracy, they say that that Yanukovych is corrupt. Well, uh, Timoshenko can give anybody a run for their money in terms of corruption. She's a kleptocrat and a NATO agent from the word go. But, um, so what is the answer? Well, the answer, again, is not personalities. It's economic development. And here's what we find. Um, the current situation of Ukraine is a foreign debt of about 140 billion U.S. dollars. Now, at the current rate, and I don't know whether the um, these characters from Sweden and Poland had thought about this, that is on the road to uh, to default. And I would suggest what Ukraine needs: the condign punishment for the Western European financiers and their U.S. Wall Street confrere is a debt moratorium to say, look, you know, sorry, you've inflicted uh, practically uh, chaos here on our national capital. We can't pay. Uh, the Russian television today had a woman uh, who's part of the wine industry, right? The, the Crimean coast of Ukraine is a great uh, wine area, right? What, what, what uh, Russians use for champagne often comes from places like, you know, Romania or, or, um, or the Crimea. So she said that she had five truckloads of, um, of wine that she wanted to send into Russia. She could have made 250,000 euros on the deal. She couldn't do it because the export permit was not issued because the administration in Kiev was shut down. So you say, look, sorry, NATO, you sent in your hooligans and now you pay. But then what do you do? We're back again to the BRICS bank. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, I don't know what you're waiting for. Seems like every week we have new examples, right? It was certainly uh, Egypt. It was certainly uh, Syria is going to need a, 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 a economic development and reconstruction uh, program. As I said on in one of these TV interviews on Press TV, Ukraine would need an immediate infusion of something like uh, $10 billion. What's with the BRICS bank? Let's get going, BRICS. You're letting all of these opportunities go by. Ukraine is another perfect example of putting this into action. And again, you don't just pass the money out. You start building and rebuilding infrastructure. One of the things about Ukraine is that the eastern Ukraine, the so-called Donetsk, Donbass, was a very powerful, heavy industrial area with dams and steel mills and other kinds of industries created during the Soviet era at great sacrifice to the Soviet people. This can be uh, rebuilt, refurbished, modernized, and remobilized. Right, The future of the country is in industrial development and, of course, in this area of uh, east-west uh, infrastructure and everything that goes with that. Some, some of these characters on National Public Radio are saying, well, maybe we'll have a new Arab Spring, right? We'll have an Arab Spring 
in Eastern Europe. I doubt it, because the Orange Revolution turned out to be such a lemon, and this is now such a lamentable show. The one that they would like to target, and don't ever forget it, is Belarus, because Belarus is an example of a country that has stayed much more within the um, the limits of what um, what is desirable, in other words, to have a modus vivendi with Russia. Belarus has essentially got this, and it will be part of the of the customs union that that I think Ukraine might well up uh, and might well end up uh, joining. But certainly, get these neo Nazis out of the square, and don't anybody get sucked into thinking that those neo Nazis are somehow uh, a positive uh, force. Now, changing gears, um, to change gears, let's remember it's getting to be the last chance to stop the Yellen nomination. Uh, hey, reactionaries, hey, Tea Party, where are you? Hey, anybody, stop yelling. It's time for Tarpley for Fedhead, and I'll just remind you of why in a minute here on World Crisis Radio. <laughs> 